Um, I'll share my screen. Can everybody see that? Okay, great. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go over the agenda. But um, so today we have the, we're just going to quickly go over the Zoom norms. Then we're going to have a quick icebreaker as well. And then we're going to dive into what is a team? What makes an unsuccessful team? What do you want from your team? And then what challenges face virtual teams? And then after that, we're going to get into the, the meat of the workshop, which is uh, the teaming activity in the mural. And when we come back, we're going to have a feedback. We're going to, we're going to be doing the feedback. Um, and then we're going to close. All right. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen this already a couple times, but um, just a quick reminder of the Zoom norms we're going to be uh, practicing for today. Um, this should be similar to what you've seen, uh, but yeah. Um, if you have any questions or need help on anything, uh, please let us know through the chat or by raising your hand in the reaction button. Um, and let's let's try and keep our video on if possible. Feel free to use the DFA um, virtual backgrounds too. I think. Yep, putting them in the chat. Yeah. Um, and to change, let's let's also change our naming conventions so um, that um, so that it's easier to recognize. Um, so. Yeah, you want to click on the three ellipses at the top right hand corner of your video screen um, and then let's change it to first name and then your organization. And then yeah, Mike should be muted on the speaking, um, but feel free to ask questions or if you have any comments. Um, in the Zoom chat throughout the presentation. Um, this is a judgment-free zone, so don't be afraid to ask for clarification. Throughout our presentation today, we have several interactive points um, and to have more structure, um, please raise your hand with the, please raise your Zoom hand. Um, you, can, <laughs> you, can, you can find the raise hand feature on the react, in the reactions button at the bottom right hand, uh, bottom right of your screen. And uh, finally, this this meeting will be recorded, and closed captions closed captioning will be available. All right. So moving on to the icebreaker. What are what are two things common you have you have in common with your group, and what are two things that are different for everybody? So in a minute, I'm gonna or Joey's gonna send everyone into breakout rooms of three to four people. And the purpose of this icebreaker is to get to know your cohort a little better. Is anyone not familiar with um, the breakout rooms or how they work? Okay, awesome. Um, right, so you'll you'll have you'll have a couple minutes in the breakout rooms, and then after we're going to come back and share. Let's have the person closest to Miami share um, what your group found, and. To get the conversation rolling, you can start off by sharing where everybody's from. That can that can be a difference or a similarity if everyone is calling in from the same city. Um, I'm talking in. Um, I think we had three three different groups, three breakout rooms, and so um, is there anyone who wants to volunteer? Yeah, I can start. Um, I was with. Dane and Sparkle, and we talked about how we all have two siblings, but we're all like different. Like I'm the youngest sibling, um, Sparkle is the middle child, and Jane is the oldest sibling. So that's like one something. Wow. Similar. Um, yeah. So it kind of worked out pretty well. And then we all are calling in from different places. So I'm from North. I'm calling in from North Carolina. Sparkle's in Chicago, and Jane is in Seattle. That's something different. And the last fourth thing that we have in common is Sparkle has theoretically convinced us that gray is our favorite color, light gray, closer to white. So we're going to go with that. 
Awesome. <laughs> yes. um, I can, oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, so I was with um, Joy, Kate, and Circute, and we all um, have siblings. So we have, we have a different number. We all have siblings. We, are, we all love to cook. And then some differences is that we are all calling in from different places. And then the years between like our closest sibling, younger or older, um, that's all different, you know, ranging from like two to 18 years, so. I can go next. So I had Ross and Katie. And Katie, isn't your last name Ross? Oh. Ah, okay, so um, the similarity that we all have is none of us have never broken a bone. And we also have brothers as siblings, but Katie has like three, I, not three brothers, but she has three siblings, you know? Um, differences, um, we all have our favorite different colors. Mine is orange, Katie's is red, and Ross's is blue. Um, also, we all have different favorite fruits. Mine is orange. Katie's is white nectarine, and Ross's is watermelon. So isn't that like, you know, interesting, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, that's, that's really interesting how um, when, when everybody was split into different groups, you know, like uh, there was a lot of, uh, I mean, I think two groups talked about colors and siblings, right? That's, <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. Yeah, I'll put the, the deck back up. Awesome. So let's see here. I'm just making sure I can see the chat before we get started, but we're going to be using the chat a lot today. And the first question that we have uh, for you all is, what is a team? Uh, and feel free to either raise your Zoom hand and you can unmute um, or, or put your answer in the chat. But if everyone could just take a moment Think about what a team is. How would you define this, this word? What do you think uh, of when you think of what a team is? Oh, nice, Joy. A group of collaborators, also a group of collaborators working on the same goal. Rhea and Joy, totally same wavelength. One word, synergy, multiple parts posting a cohesive body. Yeah, yeah, same wavelength. You guys are already on a team. Look at this, like it's happening right now. Um, a group of individuals who share, work together to solve an issue. I think these are all hitting on this. I hear words like collaborating, sharing, being on the same wavelength, seeing it happen in real time. Um, and uh, Jane, let's see here. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Jane, yes, we're so sorry for your gray hair, and but I'm getting it too, so don't worry. Older siblings unite. Um, <laughs> but all of these totally go to that, that same point of exactly all these teams happen, and there's lots of different ways that you can form teams. So if you're on a stage with your cast and your crew, you're all working to put together a production. If you're on a basketball team, you're all working to uh, win the game. But you can also see examples of teams like us um, on virtual worlds, and the bottom two actually are teams of DFAers. So some were working remote this past year, some were previously uh, pre-pandemic in person, all working together for uh, achieving goals using design. So this broad spectrum of, of teams uh, are rooted in some of the things that we talked about yesterday when we were going over tools around teaming, uh, around collaboration and communication. So the tool that we're doing and we reviewed all are under this helping us work together as a cohesive unit where we can communicate together and collaborate as um, we go forth and are, are designing. Um, and some other definitions that we wanted to, to think about and just pose, we talked about what a team is, but there's some things that kind of happen before a team needs uh, to, can, can form. And this got to look at this difference between a group and a team. So a group is a collection of individuals who coordinate their efforts, but with little collective accountability. So a group can just be a whole bunch of people uh, and they just exist currently. Um, and most teams are groups before they become teams. They're just individuals who 
have their own agendas and, and, and um, ways of going through the world. Whereas the team portion is a group of interdependent people with respect to the information, resources, and skills that combine to achieve a common goal. And it sounds like we already were on the nose with that one. We were talking about collaboration, working together, really relying on each other. And a great way to think about this is a group is just a whole bunch of people, whereas a team is really counting on each other and supporting each other to become something bigger than themselves by the relationships and the support and the skills and diverse um, experiences that they have to create this web that's really strong. Uh, the kind of you know individual stick versus bundle of stick mentality and much harder to break. Um, so we have the, the team, we have a group, we go through and, and do teaming to go and become this cohesive unit as a team. And when we're thinking about teams, there's different ways that those ebb and flow and different people that come in and join that team web that is formed. You have that core, core team, which is the main contributors responsible for those daily work outputs in a daily basis. So for example, on the wine and tape triangle team, you four are, are gonna be working together and being this core team along with Kate to make things happen and do the work. Whereas then we bring in different stakeholders and stakeholders are the people who affect or are being affected by the project and the problem space. They are the subject matter experts who uh, are episodic participants uh, that join for specialized work output. So those can be people that we see infrequently and we, we check back in and are involved. Uh, and they can be consulted for feedback or for advice for key moments when you're struggling to understand different parts of, of the problem space or you want to get clarification. So you have that core team and then the core team is bringing in different individuals called stakeholders. And the way that the team is doing their work um, can happen in different types of interactions, which are both synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous being working at the same time, but not necessarily in the same location. So we're having a synchronous call now where we are watching this presentation uh, in real time and collectively moving forth, um, but we're not located in uh, the same location. So that makes us a distributed synchronous meeting at this particular moment. Um, an asynchronous event is creating things at different time based on your availability for work. So this might be like you're assigned to do's that you have to finish at your own schedule before you come back to your, your next meeting. So really thinking about when things are happening and how they're working and who's responsible for what and when creates these kind of interactions that strengthen and uh, yeah, create that web of interactions that occur. And now I'll pass it to Junhee to ask the next question. So we're gonna put some more stuff in the chat. Yeah. Um, so what, what makes an unsuccessful team? We just talked about what a team is. Now we're gonna be talking about what works and what doesn't work in the team. What, what doesn't work on a team? Um, on the next slide. Um... Oh, oh, but before that, are we asking everybody what makes an unsuccessful team? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of, I think you guys hit it, hit the nail on the head. Um, yeah, a lot of these um, we're going to briefly go over, but yeah, lack of communication, um, ego, ego is a big one, um, accountability, yeah, fixed mindsets. Yeah, so all of these are all of these are really great. Um, it's it's great that we we can identify what um, what makes an unsuccessful team. Um, and yeah, so, uh, teams teams sometimes don't work out. It could it could be that everyone is not used to working together. Your skills may not be compatible. People on the team can feel as though they're being reduced to resources, and there may be differences in the way things are done. Um, Teams that 
don't work um, can become distrusting teams, right? Um, and the symptoms of distrusting teams can be that they hesitate to ask for help, admit their ignorances, admit uncertainty, and help outside their own area of expertise. Distrusting teams further jump to conclusions and they dread meetings and prefer to spend time working alone. The important takeaway is that it's never too late to communicate with your team to make it work. So um, moving on to the, uh, what makes a successful team. Um, yeah, I guess uh, for this one too, um, you know, what, what do you guys think makes a successful team? Yeah, a lot of it is is I guess in a way the opposite of what what uh, what we just talked about. So, yeah, respecting communication, um, mutual respect, ability to listen. Yeah. Um, so we we hope to. Um, how we hope to help you and support you is to make sure that you have the foundations for a successful team experience. So far, we've discussed uh, the characteristics of, of distrusting teams. Now we'll get into the characteristics of trusting teams. And um, trusting teams ask for help and feedback. They admit mistakes and give members the benefit of the doubt. Trusting teams offer and accept apologies. They look forward to working together. Trusting teams also appreciate and work across others, other, others' areas of expertise. The idea is to work together and build each other up. Now that, now that you have a better idea of what a team is supposed to look like, you're probably wondering, is there a beginning and end to teaming? The, uh, the answer to that is yes and no, and I'll explain in a bit why that is. Um, Typical teams go through lifespan, uh, through the lifespan of forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourn adjourning. Forming is where the team learns goals and establishes rapport. Storming is the stage where differences come to light and challenges or opportunities present themselves. Norming is where the challenges are ironed out and the team learns to work together. In the performing stage, the team excels in working autonomously and with competence. In the last stage, a journey, that's where the team keeps in touch after the goal is reached. So at this point, the project may be over and the team may not need to work together like they have going forward. But part of the last stage is to keep in touch with the team. I know these concepts are, are, are kind of abstract, so I'll, I'll give you a real life example. Last school year, I led a design team, um, DFA design team that worked with both the Y change makers and a local nonprofit kitchenware store. Um, there were there were separate projects, um, but in, in the forming stage, my team and I started off with icebreakers and getting to know each other first. We were individuals outside the project, and we wanted to get to know one another beyond that. The storming stage was where my team and I had to figure out how to schedule having team meetings, meetings with stakeholders and allocating time to work to work together on top of the school and other extracurriculars that we had. And during the storming stage, um, I wanna emphasize that it's okay to have a little bit of friction um, and you're gonna run into problems. Um, so it, don't, don't, don't stress out too much about that. And the norming stage is where we found that routine and created a culture of mutual respect and kindness. Making sure that everyone was punctual, responsible for the work and kind to one another was something that became normalized. In the performing stage, when it got closer to the final expo and deliverables were due, everyone knew what they had to do individually for us to absolutely crush it and nail the final deliverables. 
The final stage, the journey, actually kicked off last week. I met my team in person for the first time in a year working together to get ramen and gelato. Throughout this week, especially through the mural activity that we have planned for you, we're, we're preparing you for the forming and storming stages. Once, once you're able to establish rapport with your team and figure out the differences, you'll be, you'll be able to find a working dynamic and routine that works for you. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay. So, um, so where do you begin? Well, we're gonna suggest these four values to help you along the way. As you collaborate with your team, focus on these four values, empathy, humility, collaboration, and imagination. Empathy is trying to see things from someone else's perspective. We're here to design and support others. It's important to practice empathy as you work with your team. Humility is very important because sometimes you have good ideas, sometimes others may have good ideas. Um, it's impossible to have a successful team experience without collaboration. We want to work together as a team. Last but not least, imagination. We really want to encourage you to think outside the box. And like I said before, this is an absolutely uh, this is an absolute judgment-free zone. Yeah, so so keep in, keep these in mind um, as you focus in on your teams. Thanks, uh, Jenny. I really appreciate the storytelling of your your past experience going through and working with teams, and it reminds me of all the different ways that. I was either in a group project and like no one was doing work or we actually were doing a DFA project and things were working really well. So all of your past experiences might go through a similar up and down. And especially with this experience, uh, we have the unique uh, consideration of how to do this virtually. How does a team work together when they're not in the same place? It's possible we're doing it right now, but there are just a few more things that you might have to consider and a few more challenges that co-located teams not, don't necessarily have to, to do or they take for granted given the fact that they're in the same space. So I'm wondering, you know, in the chat, what are some challenges that face virtual teams? Uh, are they different than the challenges that you identified about what makes an unsuccessful team? But um, is there anything that you feel is unique to doing uh, and working together virtually that uh, you might not have thought about uh, earlier? Yes, creating this genuine sense of, of community. It's, it's really difficult because both figuratively, figuratively and, and literally the interactions that you have with others and the way you see others is a little flat uh, on a screen. Uh, harder to connect one-on-one -on -one and getting to know your team members, which is why the, the icebreakers that we've been doing and the intentional you know, uh, communications and breaks are, are baked into our agendas um really focus on creating that that time for those connections oh my gosh jane you're so right time zones is something to consider uh, i've learned much better to know you know who's in mountain time and who's on the east coast and in west coast and how to coordinate schedules with people that aren't in the same city as you is uh something that i'm always going to put time zones on an email from this point going forward it's just really nice um, but all of these and, and, and more totally relate to what does it mean to like get to, to that teaming phase and become that cohesive unit. So like we said, this geographic distance is both a psychological distance uh, that leads to potential lower levels of trust and motivation because there's only so much that you can really do, but that's, that's, a, that's a potential reframe. Uh, that's an opportunity for us to think about new ways to engage with people that we might not have been able to work with otherwise and kind of lean into the digital aspects. Um, again, there's some communication obstacles that might get in your way because there's you're using the nuances of, of body language or uh, just better understanding what people mean if you're communicating through Slack. So it leads to some over communication uh, to combat that. But limited knowledge of the team members' skills, it's really difficult to develop those one-on-one -on -one uh, conversations, develop those inside jokes and see someone and learn from other people in person. Um, so creating intentional time to do that and, and, and learn from each other is, is important if you're struggling with something and, and someone knows. 
Again, it might be more challenging to align on goals due to all of the above, and your resources may appear limited, but in this project, we're taking this, this boot camp week really seriously so that we can uh, start to introduce you to all the tools and support and resources and get to know you so you can get to know us and we all can understand how we can support each other and be the resources and um, develop the trust as uh, a cohesive cohort. And all of this can, 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 uh, can be addressed by a lot of the successful theming uh, suggestions that you had and put in the chat earlier. In addition to some of the attitudes that we want to adopt this, this uh, term, especially as we're doing uh, virtual teaming, which is always assuming positive intent. People are really trying to help each other and we're doing the best that we can in this virtual world and everyone's just doing their best and that's a great thing. But again, being open to being wrong and open to being influenced, having that open mind demonstrating the effort commitment to follow through and using empowering questions to create a self safe environment. So encouraging others, focus on building that cultural intelligence. And this gets to that, what we mean by that term is that community of um, norms and of expectations. So uh, we've been doing this and when we're at a new team, it takes a little bit while to repeat and make those uh, habits um, and develop those habits. So that's why we're continuing to communicate the Zoom norms. And these are uh, having the icebreakers and creating those moments for us to, to learn from each other. This is something that is different from place to place. And each time you enter into a new team, uh, no matter how small the project is, you're creating this new concoction of people that want to learn from each other and all a little bit different. So it's worth taking this uh, teaming moment, no matter if you're doing a group project or a multi-year thing with many people, uh, in in a, a place of work, it, it's all really helpful and can make the things that you're trying to accomplish better by taking the moment to build that cultural norm set. Um, the active listening skills, asking questions, showing empathy, again, rooted in those values that we're encouraging and building a team trust identity and cohesion. And we bring up trust a lot um, when we're talking about this and having those communication skills and being able to share yourself with others is a great way to uh, build trust in, in this network. And then we get Team DFA. Woo! Okay. Uh, okay, wonderful. So we're right on time and we're going to jump into a teaming activity in Mural, which Junhee will uh, walk us through. Yeah. But, sorry, real fast. Any questions over what we just saw today? There's a lot of potentially things that you might have been used to, but maybe haven't looked at in, in this close of a microscope. How is everyone feeling or uh, around teams? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes, I see the Zoom react. Thank you so much, Ria. Okay, great. Can everybody see my screen? Awesome. Okay. So this is the uh, the teaming mural that you guys will have some time to do. Um, so right after I, I go through this briefly, you're gonna have like a five minute break. But once you come back from it, you're gonna have time to work on this um, and just try and get through as much as you can. Um, I think ideally, hopefully, uh, we want you to be able to get uh, most of it done uh, before the design sprint on Saturday. Uh, but yeah, if, if you here, we'll start off with the, uh, the welcome. So there are there are six activities uh, that we want you to get through primary activities. Um, The first one is get to know each other a little better. So I, I, I put up an example. I don't know why my computer's okay. Um, but yeah, just, just fill this out um, and then add a couple images that, that represent, um, that you think represent you. Um, and then once you do that, we're gonna move on to the uh, summer team activity. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening. Does everyone see a blank screen as well? Okay. Uh, Rust, sorry, 
do you think you can share your screen? Yeah, yes. totally. You want to start sharing? I'll pull it up. It's just a strange glitch, but go on. Jimmy, do you want to keep explaining from there? Yeah. Um, so you, this is this is the meat of it. Um, so the, this is you want to yeah just try to get as much as you can done. Um, the first part is the uh, personal personal um, activity um, and if you see there's there's a there's different colored stickies at the top um, so just choose one write down your name and then you can um, and then use that to drag into the the workspaces the 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 tiny the the, the boxes um, with their questions um, and once you're once you're done with that you can move on to the team portion of it so um, yeah, this is the same thing. Use uh, so pick a sticky note and then um, try to try to get through uh, as many questions as you can. And then once you're done with that, we're going to move on to the norms. And this is where you're going to consolidate all the all the different um, all the different answers that you that you all wrote. And then you're gonna um, you're gonna You'll, uh, you're going to consolidate um, so you'll know what to adopt as a team for the summer. And then uh, moving on to the problem space activity. And also throughout this process, if you have any, any um, if you're confused on what to do, we put the instructions up there. Um, and if, if that's still confusing you, then um, just reach out to us uh, through chat. We'll be, we'll be nearby and uh, Ross and I will pop in and out. As you're, as you're working through this as well. But the first part is the personal bias portion of it. So um, I think everybody's, have they filled out the uh, problem space uh, form already? Yeah. So um, this is where we're gonna be discussing uh, your relationship to the problem space. And that's where that form that we slacked out, uh, Aurora, you asked that question of what that ranking system was. That's where we're going to know, and um, you all will have the chance to identify which of the three spaces, equity and social justice, climate, or mental health, that you all want to work on. Um, so just before going into that, be sure to fill it out, or um, we can do that when we enter the breakout room first so that we can set that up um, and make sure that we know which, which space you all are working on. I'm sure you may or may not have I don't know if you've had the chance to, to identify that as a team yet, but now you'll have the chance. then the, the fourth activity is setting up a meeting schedule. So the, the yellow notes, um, the yellow notes are the DFA, DFA events. Um, and then the blue notes are the huddles, uh, the huddle times. So the huddle times you're going to, you're going to pick on the right. But before that, um, you want to ideally um, set up uh, a schedule. That, every, that works for everyone uh, once a week where you can meet up as a team um, and to go over the materials together to work as a team. So that, that's gonna be uh, number four. Then number five is gonna be a creative team photo. So um, designate somebody to, to take the photo and then uh, once you have, just drag it in, drag and drop um, into the mural right here. The last uh, main activity is that you're going to sign up for Tuesday huddles with your design coach. Whatever time works for you on Tuesday, as a team, um, yeah, just put in put in the put in your time. Um, I'll jump into this, and uh, when we get back from the break, we'll be in breakout rooms, and you all will have the opportunity to. A look in this. This mural is located in your team room, and it looks like Laura, I can see you're already there. Um, but we'll continue um, working and give you as much time to start this, and you'll have uh, to finish uh, everything. So the goal is not to get through everything as fast as possible, but really have intentional, deep discussions, especially for that um, personal and team uh, conversations. You can learn a little bit more about each other's working styles and how you want to be. How do you want to communicate with each other so you can then. 
uh, create the norms that you um, are making and want to have this uh, term. So we'll take a five minute break. If you're starting to, to jump into the mural, um, that's amazing, um, but we'll just take a break. And then when we come back, we'll be in breakout rooms and we can start working. So everybody, welcome back. I know you are making a lot of progress, but we just wanted to finish today's session with a few more things, and then we can give you all the rest of the time to finish those uh, before Saturday's event. So I'm going to share my screen for one last time and jump in so everyone can see that. Great. Yeah, so just a quick overview, you know, the goal for doing this and the activity is to help you proactively plan how to address a lot of different types of issues that might pop up uh, and make sure you know everyone's working styles or how you, they want to be communicated so that those potential roadblocks down the road you'll be very prepared to address. Um, and you're also using the design process on each other to make the experience the best that it can be. We're going to jump into more around the design process in our sprint on Saturday, but you are asking questions, immersing, getting to know everybody and creating strategies to address the situation based on the information that you're gathering from each other. So uh, you're living the design process already and you're co-creating the way that you wanna to work together. So for this last portion of the, the call, we just wanna talk about feedback. Uh, we wanna set some, some norms and expectation settings for, for feedback. So for this project, we really want to have feedback as being an expectation. So. Uh, this is something that we're looking forward to and incorporate very strongly into the DFA experience and in our projects here. And we, I challenge you all to reframe feedback as a gift. It's something that is really exciting to receive um, and it takes time to develop to how to give. But the feedback is exciting and is a gift because it's how you grow. It's how you can try something and then you learn from it so that you can improve. And it's really helpful to get um, support from the people that you trust and getting help from others so that we can learn and develop new skills. The other thing and the big secret of feedback is that people like being helpful. They like you know, being able to be recognized for something that they're good at and helping other people learn. So um, keeping an open mind around feedback as, as a gift and um, giving good feedback uh, can promote trust and also be part of the teaming process. And tying it to back to what we learned a little bit yesterday from Sarah Johnson's presentation around mental health, she was talking about a community of care. And this is building the capacity of members to provide that compassionate support by embedding those skills and tools to where we work with in place. So in this context, we're really thinking of feedback as another way you can think about it is that compassionate support for others. You really want them to improve and you want uh, the whole team to do uh, well. And so by providing that support, we're creating that community of care. And the other slide that I thought was really interesting that I wanted to harken back to in this is that when do we need help? You know, feedback um, can, can also be a way of, you know, helping people improve. So when you're trying to get help from others, it's important to identify when, you know, you need the feedback where you need help to address a question. And so when we're attempting something or counting a situation and we don't have the time, skills, knowledge, or emotional energy are moments when we seek help from other people. I mean, that's pretty logical. If you don't have the time, it's really great to delegate or have someone else do it because then it can get done. If you don't know how to do it, it's helpful to talk to someone who knows how to do it and then potentially can learn. But the main one about this that I, I wanted to highlight is the knowledge. So in the design process, a lot of the things that we are creating are, are ways to learn whether or not it works. We're kind of scientists in that standpoint. When you are trying something on, seeing if it fits, seeing what resonates with people, and seeking that knowledge and that feedback from others so that you can improve then um, what you're, you're creating and proposing. So thinking about the lack of knowledge and thinking of us as knowledge seekers and trying to gather as much information as possible is another place that you can think about feedback when you're engaging with each other and with your community partners down the road. The feedback is a kind of a two-way street. And if you might not be familiar with it, there are actually ways to, to give and receive feedback that we wanted to cover and set some foundations and just talk about. But it's hard to give good feedback. Um, giving critique, um, which is another term that we'll use pretty common, uh, there are muscles that need to, to be exercised. And it might be really uncomfortable at first, you know, uh, but the more you practice and, and develop the habit 
of, of incorporating it into uh, a standard and expectation, the more uh, you're going to be able to figure out how you best give feedback, how you receive feedback, and, and what that relationship is. Being vulnerable in your feedback is another way to help you, you grow. It's, it's kind of scary to give feedback if you're kind of new to someone, don't really know them, maybe. And that's why teaming and develop that strong dynamic can help so that when you give a piece of feedback, you know it's coming from that, that place of support. Um, so for someone who is giving feedback, it's really in, uh, helpful to know um, your intention of, you know, there's some standards that we want to uh, make sure that we're, we're following when we're giving feedback so that, oops, I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to find my notes here, um, but having to, to know your intention. So that means, you know, when you're giving feedback, you want to be able to know why you're giving someone that feedback. You know, you want to improve, you're trying to identify what's about it is important. A feedback is helpful when it's timely. So giving feedback right after someone uh, has, has done something, the sooner is usually the better. There might be some instances when you want to just be aware of context, maybe, maybe it's emotionally not the right moment or energy-wise or just time of day-wise. But you know, when something's fresh, people are much more, uh, it's, you know, it's fresh in your head, you're thinking about it, getting feedback then rather than like a few days later when you don't even remember what you did is a great way to, to think about um, when you're giving feedback. But also feedback is really helpful when it's specific. If you're giving general things of like, I don't care, like that's, that's, that was weird. What was weird about it? Um, it, it takes some, some time to identify, well, the way that this was presented or the way that you told the story could be changed in this way and, and the way that this happened um, could, could evolve as you're going forth. So being specific with your feedback and then going to knowing your intention, that well-planned, like when you're giving feedback, you don't want to give someone a feedback on a presentation right before they go into the presentation because that might cost, you know, get them a little bit off guard, but taking the time to uh, think about when it is in relation to that feedback is, is important. And DFA, we have a framework to help you do this. We call it, I like, I wish, I wonder. So when you're giving feedback, starting your feedback with one of these framing sentences is actually a really great way to um, make it rooted in your point of view, because no one can argue with how you like or you wish or what you're feeling or wondering about something, because that's your gift. This is your perspective and how you're, you're contributing it to uh, other people. So if you like something, like I like the way that this mural was set up, I wish that this meal had a different activity in there. And I wonder what would happen if we actually did the meal in person um, are great ways to, to give feedback and help someone think about how they're um, presenting or what they're, what they're doing. So on the opposite end, receiving the feedback. Uh, again, you wanna assume that positive intent uh, from someone. They're trying to make your project uh, the best that it can be or your concept as best as, that, as it can be. And a way to do that though, is separating yourself from your ideas. A lot of people, you know, you put all this work into creating an idea, and then it's sometimes really rough for people to suggest things that aren't what you're, uh, that could improve it. And being able to decouple your ideas from you as, as a creator is, is a, well, it takes some practice again, too. But um, something that was helpful for me is thinking that the feedback is directed to your ideas, and ideas don't have feelings. People have feelings. So when we're giving feedback, we're giving feedback about the ideas. So it's not anything about you, it's totally un unrelated and all about the ideas that are being generated or what is happening. Um, so that decoupling of your ideas and, and your individual, even though you've made the thing, um, we're trying to, to further other missions and it, it's sometimes it's a difficult process to do. Um, and then last but not least, you ultimately decide whether or not to incorporate the feedback. Uh, you have the ownership and the agency as, as the team Yes, sometimes uh, people give really good feedback, but sometimes it might not be the best, but you wanna, you know, thank you so much for the feedback. And then, then you can figure out if it makes the most sense to incorporate, worth trying, worth exploring, um, but in the end, uh, the team and the community is, knows best. And now we're at time, so the last slide, we want your feedback, oh my goodness. Uh, all summer, we're gonna be asking you to help us improve your experience, so we have, created um, moments of feedback in Google Forms that we're going to ask you to fill out that are just quick summaries of how are you feeling, what's, how, how's it going with the I like, I wish, I wonder framework, so that you can give us feedback on the session so that we can improve the next time we do these sessions, either with you and a similar thing down the road this summer or with other 
uh, individuals uh, in DFA's world. So we'll share that out in Slack in the follow-up. So just give us feedback for after each session. Um, and last but not least, we have our design sprint on Saturday. So uh, in between now and then, you're gonna be finishing up the work that you have in your um, mural. And I am, uh, what we're doing Saturday is we're gonna be practicing and running through the design process to really get you a sense of what we're doing all summer. So we're kind of finishing boot camp. Uh, and then tomorrow is gonna, or Saturday is going to be a big explosion into the design process where we're gonna run through everything and um, be exposed to all the steps that we'll explore more deeply this uh, summer. We just wanna reiterate that design is really just figuring out stuff uh, in a creative way. So this weekend, we're gonna be looking at ways that we can use the tools of design to make this summer even better uh, than we already are. So we're going to uh, be focusing and the focus of the sprint, which is a word that we use to talk about a facilitated speed run through a design project. So that's what we mean by a sprint. Uh, we're going to be figuring out ways to make this a fun and engaging summer for you and all the other YMCA uh, participants that will be joining us in the near future. So the plan is we're going to be coming up with ideas to test and potentially be implemented this summer that can make this an opportunity for us to uh, work to, together. And again, design is figuring out stuff in a creative way with people that you like. So um, that's it. That is the, the project. Thanks so much. Continue working on your teaming either right after the session if you're in it, set up another Zoom call, uh, coordinate amongst yourself. You have the, the Slack and we'll see everybody on Saturday. Let us know if you have any questions. Again, this recording and the deck will be available in meeting recap along with um, some of the other um, things that we covered. So enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and we'll see everybody on Saturday. Thank Bye. You. Bye.